Good evening everyone. Welcome to Arne Academy where you can crack on NEET PG exams with us with the top educators, quality content and have a, and have a great learning experience. So, let, so guys, let's crack NEET PG together. A little about me, I am Dr. Sasha Menin Remedies. I have done my MBBS from Father Muller Medical College, Mangalore. My MD in Anesthesia from Father Muller Medical College, Mangalore. I have two publications and one paper presentation in the field of Anesthesia. And uh, I have been working and teaching for the, for, in Bangalore for the past two and a half years. Today's topic will be Obstructive Sleep Apnea. It will be divided into two parts. I'll uh, take the two parts in two classes. Uh, this class actually started like late. It was supposed to be at 5.15. But I should start the next class with schedule for 6.30. I should be starting the next class by, in, in, by about 6.35, 6.40. So guys, uh, let's continue. Now a little about Unacademy. Uh, it's one of India's largest online learning platform where you can get your plus, plus subscription and access to unlimited live and recorded courses from India's best educators. So what will you get out of an academy? Basically, out of an academy, uh, so sorry, but on an academy. So when you go to a coaching institute, it's very unreliable. You have to get up, get ready. There's a lot of waste of time, a lot of delays. But okay, you do get up, you get ready, you reach there. Then you need a correct place, so you have to be in time to get choose an appropriate place. Then you have to get your educator's attention when you have a doubt. And these are very large classes. It's very difficult for your educator to clear everyone's doubts, right? So your educator finds it difficult to clear everyone's doubts and uh, it becomes uh, quite tiresome for your edu educator too. They have a stipulated amount of time in which they have to uh, stipulated amount of time in which they have to finish class and all that and so it becomes kind of a little difficult for the educator to you know finish class in that stipulated amount of time plus clear everyone's doubts but as you are in, an, in a, at an academy during the class you can ask us your queries we will always clear your queries either as soon as you ask your doubt or at the end of the class as per your educator's convenience but your doubts will be cleared then again these are all structured courses so they are all, all in line with your exam syllabus and they help you best prepare for it so these are all uh, courses uh, that uh, have been prepared after researching your educator has researched and whatever is best for the and whatever is best based on that the courses are being uh, structured Life tests and quizzes, so they help. Uh, we have our life tests and quizzes which evaluate your preparation. So, with our regular mock tests and quizzes, you uh, we can evaluate uh, you can evaluate your preparation, and uh, this gives a uh, gives you all a detailed analysis on how you are performing. Then, of course, uh, unlimited access. So, one subscription can gives you access to all our live and recorded courses to watch from the comfort of any of your devices so wherever you all are sitting but wherever you all are uh, whatever you all are doing uh, you know when the uh, time is scheduled from the comfort of your home so wherever you all are comfortable from whichever device you all can access the various classes these are some of our top educators dr nikita nanwani dr mohammad azam dr devish mishra dr preeti sharma Dr. Nikita Nanwani is need me PG mentor for radiology as well as mnemonics and concept focusing on much more topics and which encompasses all subjects. So uh, mnemonics is a very um, it's a very uh, good uh, topic and if you all are able to prepare your own mnemonics it will be very and if you all are the type where mnemonics helps you all then it will be very helpful for you all to study with mnemonics and if you all can prepare your own mnemonics it's even better because it is more advantageous for you all. These are some of the courses offered on our platform. So as you can see there are so many subjects right. There are almost 19 subjects that you all have to cover. And they are a 
vast i mean each subject is very vast i know it's a tough exam it's not easy to clear this exam i know that so well but you'll have to do this so that's why we are here to help you now as you can see on the screen uh various uh, the various marks have been allotted to each of the subjects so your topics like psychiatry anesthesia radio dermatology have seven marks each from the neat pg point of view so 11 marks have been allotted to these uh, subjects and uh, what happens is uh, these subjects so yeah so 11 marks have been allotted and uh, uh, these are not small subjects so we didn't we all didn't really we didn't really have to do them much in detail to, during undergraduation right these were known as the so-called smaller topics or rather uh, you could put it in such a way saying that uh, okay fine not a smaller topic but uh, you could put it in a way saying that um, uh, what do you say um, these didn't y'all didn't have to deal with in great detail you we didn't have to study them in detail but for neat pg you'll have to know these topics like a little more in depth to answer the questions that will be asked during your neat pg exam uh your anatomy uh, physiology and all have 44 marks each allotted to them now those subjects you'll have to go way to detail because you'll they can ask you anything from anywhere in those subjects because for those subjects for very long uh you'll have studied basically for a year and all that in your under in undergrad we have done those each topic for a year so of course those will you know they will take time you have to do them in detail but these other subjects like how you didn't have to study very much over here too the questions are kind of basic a little not easier if you don't study you cannot answer those questions to frank if you don't go through these topics but they are more if you've gone through this topic and revise these uh, subjects and revise once what the syllabus of neat pg you will be able to crack these questions and you will you, these marks will be yours it's guaranteed so here these subjects the subjects where unlikely that you will lose marks so do not neglect the subjects is what i'm saying you need to study the subjects don't neglect them these are some of the ongoing courses on our platform course on neurophysiology gi surgery cardiovascular thoracic surgery capsule on larynx respiratory system course on pathology now coming to the subscription so as you can see on the screen there are five types of subscriptions right now you have your 1, 3, 6, 12, 24 months. Now I would highly recommend uh, that you all go for these two. Those of you who are giving your exam this year, this should be more than, the 6 months should suffice for you all. Um, it should be a good offer. But otherwise those of you who actually want to take some time off, I would highly recommend the 12 and the 24 months. There is firstly nothing wrong in dropping over. Nobody cares how long you took to clear your need G. At the end of the day, it is what you know. It is the amount of practice you put into the subject. Also, this these um, two plans are more economical because uh, subscription is a one-time subscription. So once it expires, you will have to, uh, you know, if you want to fall back and go through the classes again, continue the classes, you will have to resubscribe. So you will have to pay the amount again. So if you take the smaller duration, smaller duration courses you will have to pay the amount again right but with these you have the buffer period so it is more economical also uh, another thing is like i was talking about subjects like anesthesia psychiatry and all so we never really had to study those subjects right over here you are studying the subjects you are getting to know about all the subjects a little more in detail so your preferences might change, your likes and dislikes might change. This is really helpful because it helps you to prepare well. I mean, you all are doing this for the rest of your life, so you all need to know. Uh, you all need to know what you like because you all need to enjoy what you do, so that uh, it can be done to the best of your ability, right? So uh, that's how it is. Now we shall uh, move on with class.
so OSC just a sec oh yeah the 24 month subscription again oh yeah and I didn't tell you also there is an element of discount over here so if you use my code even for the above you can avail a 10% discount on these subscriptions so as you can see the 24 month this is 30,000 here is your 10% off so it applies to all of them right so all these have a see here all these have a 10% here here you go all have a 10% off now coming to today's topic coming to today's topic so Yeah, so OSA is basically uh, okay. So OSA is a sleep disorder, it is basically obstructive sleep apnea. OSA is nothing but obstructive sleep apnea. So it is a sleep disorder that involves cessation or significant decrease in airflow in the presence of breathing effort. Right. So there is a sudden decrease in the airflow in the presence of breathing effort. It is the most common type of sleep disorder. It is the most common type of sleep disordered breathing and is characterized by recurrent episodes of upper airway collapse during sleep. So there will be recurrent collapse of the upper airway when the patient is sleeping. So it basically produces apnea and uh, it produces sin, uh, periods of apnea. Okay, so basically this disorder is associated with obesity, right? Uh, now most common, uh, I mean it can be uh, associated with other syndromes too, but most commonly uh, this disorder is associated with uh, obesity so it is a sleep disorder which uh, can be it is grouped into the following conditions with the uh, so it is grouped into the following types so this OSA is grouped into various types so depending on uh, excessive daytime sleepiness conditions with disorders initiating and maintaining sleep and circadian rhythm disorder so it can be associated with um, this OSA can be associated with various uh, disorders and hence based on that it is grouped into types so uh, with the types it is grouped um, following conditions with this is basically sleep disorders okay sleep disorder types so this is a sleep disorder right so sleep disorders are grouped into conditions with excessive daytime somnolence that is basically your OSA then you have uh, uh, disorders with initiating sleep so disorders with initiating uh, sleep that is insomnia and then circadian rhythm 
disorders. So your circadian rhythm disorders are basically uh, jet lag etc. Okay. So uh, these are the various types of sleep disorders that is conditions with excessive daytime somnolence that is your OSA, disorders with initiating sleep that is insomnia and your circadian rhythm disorders like jet lag. Now uh, definition of the various uh, uh, re uh, respiratory events that occur various respiratory events so we have apnea so it is defined by the american academy of sleep medicine aasm as a cessation of airflow for at least 10 seconds so apnea is basically the cessation of airflow for at least 10 seconds hypopnea is defined as a recognizable reduction but not complete cessation so there is not complete cessation of breathing for 10 seconds or longer or a decrease of greater than 50 percent in the amplitude of a measured validated measure of breathing or a reduction in amplitude of less than 50 percent associated with the desaturation of four four percent or uh, more so basically uh, hypopnea is a decrease in breathing for 10 seconds or a decrease in 50 percent in the amplitude of a measured breath or a decrease in the amplitude of less than 50 percent associated with desaturation of more than four percent so Sorry. So respiratory effort related arousal. So it is an event which is characterized by increasing respiratory efforts for 10 seconds or longer leading to arousal from sleep but one that does not fulfill the criteria for apnea or hypopnea. So there is a effort for 10 seconds or longer which causes an arousal from sleep but it does not fill the criteria for apnea or hypopnea. No, so OSA is like we discussed in this slide. It is a sleep disorder which involves a cessation of uh, decrease in airflow in the presence of breathing effort. Uh, it is not a decrease, it is, sorry, cessation or a significant decrease in airflow for more than 10 seconds. Despite continuous ventilatory effort, there is cessation of airflow for more than 10 seconds, uh, 5 or more times per hour of sleep. So this completes the definition. 5 or more times per hour of sleep. So in one hour, 5 or more times, there will be a cessation in uh, cessation in the airflow in the presence of adequate breathing effort for more than 10 seconds okay and this is associated with the decrease in arch arterial saturation of greater than 4 percent so this is associated with the decrease in arterial saturation Of more than 4% so this is the full definition so now we have the, the definition these are the pointers in the definition that have to be remembered right sorry this one right so there is a cessation of airflow in the presence of adequate breathing for more than 10 seconds five or more times per hour of sleep these episodes are seen and this is associated with the decrease in arterial oxygen saturation more than 4%. Now obstructive, now hypopnea we know. So what is obstructive sleep hypopnea? So obstructive sleep hypopnea. Right? So obstructive sleep hypopnea is defined as a decrease in airflow of more than 50%. So decrease in airflow. 
of more than 50%, not cessation, there is a decrease in airflow of more than 50% for more than 10 seconds, 15 or more times per hour of sleep, 15 or more times per hour of sleep, with the decrease in SpO2 of decrease in SpO2 of more than 4%. The difference is here 15 or more times per hour of sleep and there is a decrease in airflow uh, more than 50% for more than 10 seconds of course that is the same but there is a decrease not a cessation in air flow. Now both these forms of uh, Obstructive, this obstructive sleep apnea hypopnea syndrome is associated with snoring sleep disrupt so there will be the common uh, symptoms to both these are snoring uh, increased uh, arousal basically uh, effort induced arousal increased arousal in the night uh, daytime sleepiness Altered cardiovascular function. Then uh, there will be hypercarbia, polycythemia, pulmonary hypertension, so hypercarbia, polycythemia. Hypertension. Uh, MI, left ventricular hypertrophy, so LVH. MI, all these syndromes can be associated with these two. Now, obstructive events are characterized by continued thoracoabdominal effort in the setting of partial or complete airflow cessation. Uh, central events by lack of thoracoabdominal abdominal effort in this setting. So mixed events have both obstructive and central features. They generally begin without thoracoabdominal effort and end with several th thoracoabdominal effort in breathing. So sleep related breathing disorders. So obstructive sleep and apnea should be considered as a continuum of disease that is a spectrum of abnormalities from snoring to obesity hypoventilation syndromes so there will be snoring there will be hypopneas apneas and it is a continuum right from snoring to obesity hypoventilation syndrome so it is a continuum of diseases it is not a separate thing So basically, uh, the patho pathophysiology of So, uh, the various uh, changes, uh, the what leads to this uh, 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 obstructive sleep and apnea. So, basically, obesity is a huge factor that plays a role in the uh, in the pathophysiology of this. So, basically, obesity yeah. is a huge, huge factor that plays a uh, path, uh, plays a role in the pathophysiology of obstructive sleep. Apnea. So, obstructive sleep apnea is basically caused by soft tissue collapse in the pharynx, right? So, transmural pressure is the difference between the intraluminal pressure and the surrounding tissue pressure. If the transmural pressure decreases, the cross-sectional area of the pharynx decreases. So, basically the difference between the intramural pressure and the surrounding tissue pressure. So, when the surrounding tissue pressure increases, 
decreases then your transmural pressure will decrease and this leads to a decrease in the uh, cross sectional area of the pharynx if this pressure passes a critical point pharyngeal close, closing pressure is reached and this causes the tissue collapsing inwards and the airway gets obstructed right so what happens this transmural pressure so this is the main thing you all need to remember the transmural pressure is the difference between intraluminal pressure and the surrounding tissue pressure so when the surrounding tissue pressure increases your total transmural pressure will decrease this will lead to a decrease in the cross sectional area of the pharynx and this uh, this uh, leads to a airway collapse So there are a lot of anatomical factors that play a role. So in children, basically enlarged tonsils, uh, volume of the tongue, soft tissue, lateral pharyngeal wall, length of the soft palate, abnormal positioning of maxilla, mandible. So um, some of the alterations of the airway, you know, in basically in the morbidly abased that lead to this include. So there will be uh, adipose tissue in the lateral pharyngeal wall. So in the lateral pharyngeal wall, adipose tissue deposition. So adipose tissue deposition in the lateral pharyngeal wall. Uh, there will be there can be adipose tissue deposition in the uvula, tonsilla, pillars, the tongue, airy epiglottic folds. All these will cause a decrease in the pharyngeal area. Okay. Uh, even uh, so the adipose tissue deposition in the false vocal cords may be it may it will lead to difficulty in seeing the opening of the airway then deposits of adipose tissue uh, external to the upper airway uh, like in the lateral pharyngeal pads of jowls etc presence of hypopharyngeal adipose tissue presence of uh, pretracheal adipose tissue this will push the hyoid bone posteriorly into a less favorable position causing the epiglottis to override, override the glottic. So when there is a adipose tissue over the higher higher bone, it pushes, pushes the, uh, uh, it pushes the, sorry, in the pretracheal adipose, pushes the higher, higher bone posteriorly and thus the epiglottis will fall over the vo vocal cords. Then there will be an alteration in the shape of the pharynx due, due to deposition of this fat, which will, uh, uh, the pharynx will form an ellipse, basically okay so the pharynx will form an ellipse with a long axis uh, uh, lateral transverse to an it will basically form an ellipse so it will reduce the axis then uh, there will be decreased efficiency of the dilator you know the pharyngeal dilator muscles because of so much of adipose tissue deposition so that is seen in the obese patients now there are certain neuromuscular factors uh, that also play a role um, there's so activity in the upper airway uh, including reflex activity which leads to a reduced ventilatory motor output to the upper airway muscle so this also can play a role so uh, certain uh, innate factors also can play a role in this uh, uh, condition So certain innate factors also can play a role like uh, just a sec there it is so facial elongation posterior facial compression retrognathia micronathia mandibular hypoplasia brachycephalic head inferior displacement of the hyoid like i said because of any fat a pretracheal fat can uh, push the hyoid bone posteriorly adenotonsillar hypertrophy particularly in children pierre robin syndrome down syndrome marfan syndrome prader willi syndrome high arch palate and of course obesity okay so nasal obstruction basically any polyps septal deviation tumors trauma stenosis uh, can lead to obstructive sleep apnea, retroparietal obstruction like any elongated posterior place palate and uvula, tonsil, adenoid hypertrophy, uh, retroglossal obstruction, macroglossia and tumors all can lead to obstructive sleep apnea. Now the non-structural risk factors are your 
there you go obesity central fat distribution uh, compared to male female uh, ratio the males are more it more predisposed age post menopausal state alcohol use sedative smoking uh, habitual snoring with daytime somnolence supine sleep syndrome rapid eye movement sleep now your obesity uh, there are two types of uh, severe obesity is an actually severe obesity is an independent uh, risk factor for uh, obstructive sleep apnea hypopnea syndrome right so it is an independent uh, risk factor but however not all forms of obesity are linked to this so there are two types of obesities basically your uh, peripheral obesity your gynecoid obesity so your gynecoid obesity uh, has very little association with the uh, obstructive sleep apnea your central obesity on the other hand So central obesity on the other hand is associated with OSA particularly in patients who possess a weight circumference so increased neck circumference so basically the increased weight sorry not waist I'm sorry waist increased waist and increased neck circumference so these are independent these are risk factors for central obesity so it is said that uh, the waist to hip ratio was if uh, of all the risk factors the strongest correlation is with the waist circumference in markers for osa which include uh, uh, waist circumference in particularly is waist to hip ratio so the strongest indicator is the waist to hip ratio the so indicators more than 1 in men and more than 0 0.85 in men. so then you have your neck circumference um, poor malam patti classification um, non-obese individuals of course you have the cartilaginous abnormalities what we just discussed uh, tonsillar hypertrophy, nasal obstruction, other factors are all this male, male sex, age, postmenopausal state, alcohol use. These are some of the other factors that play a role in these uh, things. Then other conditions that are associated uh, like hypothyroidism. So hypothyroidism we call macroglossia, increased soft tissue mass, myopathy, neurological syndromes like post polio syndrome, muscular dystrophies, Scheidegger syndrome, stroke, acromegaly like macroglossia, increased soft tissue mass, uh, environmental exposures like smoke, environmental irritants, allergies, alcohol, hypnotic sedative medications, all these also predisposed to OSA. Uh, now, the epidemi epidemiology prevalence in the US has been 2 to 4% for women and 4 to 9% for men. Uh, sleep disturbance disorders uh, it remains undiagnosed in approximately 93% of affected women and 82% of the affected men. So the symptoms basically include snoring, usually loud, habitual and bothersome to others. Uh, there will be witnessed apneas which often interrupt the snoring and end with a snot. So, the patient uh, will be snoring, then the snoring will be interrupted and the patient loudly will let out a snort like a grunt noise. 
uh, gasping and choking sensation that arouses the patient from sleep. This leads to the daytime somnolence, insomnia, nocturia, restless sleep with patients often experiencing frequent arousal and tossing during the night. All these symptoms basically lead to your lead to the increased daytime sleepiness. Now these are the those were the nocturnal symptoms. These are your daytime symptoms. So non-restorative sleep that is waking up tired when they went to as when they went to bed morning headache or dry or sore throats excessive daytime sleepiness that usually begins during quiet activities like reading watching tv so as the severity worsens initially it will be while doing quiet activities you know quietly when you're reading and all but as the severity worsens patients begin to feel sleepy during activities that even require alertness like driving at school work etc okay daytime tiredness cognitive deficits memory and intellectual impairment so there would be memory loss loss of concentration so initially even though the patient uh, the patient can perform uh, like only during reading or watching tv the patient feels sleepy but slowly as it progresses the patient starts to feel sleepy even while doing general work uh, there would be decreased vigilance morning confusion uh, personality and mood changes like including depression, anxiety, sexual dysfunction, uh, importance, decreased libido, GERD, hypertension, depression. Now coming to excessive daytime sleepiness. So one of the most common and difficult symptoms. Okay, this reduces quality of life. It impairs daytime performance and causes neurocognitive deficit so it leads to memory loss then uh, because of this excessive data and sleepiness the, uh, the person cannot function normally right he cannot bring uh, go about his day-to-day -day activity so it becomes very difficult for these uh, patients then we have our equot uh, e so this can be assessed during the equot sleepiness scale so this is a questionnaire which is used to determine how frequently the patient is likely to doze off in eight frequently encountered situations. So this Epworth's sleep scale, it's basically a questionnaire which determines uh, uh, how frequently the patient can doze off in eight frequently encountered situations. The other questionnaires is your stop questionnaire. This is stop questionnaire. Right, so your stop questionnaire S stands for snoring. T is tiredness or daytime sleeping. Then uh, O is observed apnea. Is high blood pressure. So this is another questionnaire. So uh, then there is the Berlin questionnaire. One is a straw, effort sleep scale, and Berlin questionnaire. These are all screening for OSA. This Apple sleep scale is basically for excessive daytime sleepiness. So Apple sleep scale is in contrast to just feeling tired. How likely are you to? Excuse me. So in, in contrast to just feeling tired, how likely are you to doze off or fall asleep in the following situations? So zero is would never doze, one is slight chance of dozing, moderate chance of dozing, high chance of dozing. So zero to three, never, slight, moderate, high. So this is the questionnaire that is given, uh, the, the rating for the questionnaire, eight common questions are asked. The eight, uh, the common thing is uh, while sitting and reading, while watching TV, uh, sitting in uh, sitting inactive in a public place that is a theater or a meeting 
a passenger in a car for an hour without a break, uh, lying down to rest in the afternoon when circumstances permit, sitting and talking to someone, sitting quietly after lunch without alcohol in a car while stopping for a few minutes in traffic. So based on this, the scale, the Epsworth, these uh, questions, Epsworth, Epsworth, the sleep scale is, so the, accordingly, 0, to 1, 2, 3, according to what the patient does, uh, answers, the scoring is given. So a score of 12, score of 12 is associated with a greater propensity to fall asleep on multiple sleep latency tests. It is useful for evaluating responses to treatment. Okay, It should decrease with effective treatment. So that basically this is also used to evaluate response to treatments. The Epsworth sleep scale Epsworth sleep scale should decrease with effective treatment. So physical examination, obesity, uh, basically a body mass index greater than BMI greater than 30 percent. So now uh, BMI is uh, So BMI, uh, there are, so BMI, just uh, to know, BMI, body mass index, so uh, uh, normal, uh, healthy normal weight BMI is, normal BMI is 18.6 to 24.9 kg per meter square. Then you have your overweight 25 to 29.9, obesity 32, 34.9, severe obesity. is uh, 35 to 39.9 and your morbid obesity is BMI of more than 40 right so BMI of more than 30 basically from here which so it basically includes your obesity severe obesity and morbid obesity. Okay. So a large neck circumference that is greater than 17 inches in men and more than 15 inches in women. Abnormal Malampatti scoring that is basically an airway examination. Patient is asked to open the mouth and the position of the uvula, the tongue, etc. is assessed. Posterior, the heart palate. So based on that, narrowing of the lateral airways, enlarged tonsil, retrognathia, micronathia, high arched, hard palate. So systemic arterial hypertension uh, is present in approximately 50% of patients with OSC. They can have pulmonary hypertension because of the hypercarbia, congestive heart failure, stroke, metabolic syndrome, diabetes mellitus. Basically, these are all conditions that are also associated with obesity that is seen in these patients. So, what are the cardiovascular diseases in obstructive sleep apnea? So, vagal stimulation causes bradycardia. Bradycardia and hypoxia provoke serious cardiac rhythm disturbances. That is, you can see premature BTC, stole ventricular tachycardia, tachycardia, uh, arrest, arrest. So, during obstructive sleep apnea, there is vagal stimulation which leads to bradycardia, leading to rhythm disturbances that can finally lead in, uh, result in a cardiac arrest, arrest also. So, these are the various indices for sleep disordered breathing. Apnea hypopnea index. So, apnea hypopnea index is defined as the average number of episodes of apnea and hypopnea by per hour. So, uh, the results are uh, 
so this is basically uh, how a PSG is uh, is uh, so PSG is basically the PSG is a gold standard for diagnosis of it gives a definitive diagnosis of apnea okay it is a uh, sleep study okay uh, which involves performed by it is performed in sleep study centers which examines the nocturnal sleeping patterns by monitoring uh, physiological parameters okay so basically it consists of an EEG or uh, electroculogram and electromyogram so PSG consists of an EEG electroculogram and electromyogram all these three are recorded right um, so an airway microphone so during the PSG test an airway microphone uh, to monitor monitors uh, airflow from the nose and the mouth elastic belts are placed on the chest and abdomen to monitor respiratory effect and an infrared video camera monitors body position so one channel of uh, electrocardiogram to monitor cardiac activity a pulse oximeter and two leg emg channels to monitor leg movement so uh, basically uh, uh, monitor to mo uh, airflow monitors kept at the nose the belts around the chest monitor the chest movements uh, ecg monitors the cardiac movements emg monitors the leg movements during the uh, uh, PSG study that is the uh, to make the definitive diagnosis of OSA and this is reported as apnea hypopnea index okay uh, the results are observed in the total number of apneas and hypopneas per hour of sleep or the apnea hypopnea index values of 6 to 20 21 40 and greater than 40 so basically 6 to 20 21 to 40 and greater than 40 so this is mild moderate and severe osc mild it severe osc so mild osa is basically mild osa is with apnea hypopnea index of six between six and twenty moderate osa is with apnea hypopnea index between 21 and 40 and more and severe is Severe is more than uh, apnea hypopnea index of more than 40. So the respiratory disturbance index is basically the average number of respiratory disturbances per hour. So it is a it is basically a combination of uh, apnea hypopnea index plus AI. So your AI is basically your uh, arousals uh, arousal index okay. ai is your arousal index which uh, indicates uh, arousals per hour so this indicates your arousals per hour and apnea hypopnea index average number of episodes of apnea and hypopnea per hour so the combination of these two gives your respiratory disturbance so the diagnostic criteria for OSA so individuals must fulfill criteria for A or B or plus criteria for C to be diagnosed with OSA so A is excessive daytime sleepiness that is not explained by uh, other factors so uh, excessive daytime sleepiness not explained by other factors two or more of the following not explained by other factors that is choking or gasping during sleep recurrent awakening from sleep unfresh waking up unfresh from sleep daytime fatigue and impaired concentration so this is very subjective actually to be frank so choking or gasping recurrent awakening from sleep and waking up uh, not fresh daytime fatigue and impaired concentration c is Overnight monitoring demonstrates 5 to 10 or more obstructed breathing events per hour during sleep or greater than 30 events per 6 hours of sleep. So these events may include any combination of obstructive apnea, hypopnea or respiratory effort related arousals. This is your PSG, your polysomnography and overnight sleep study or polysomnography is what is the diagnostic tool okay. 
so in laboratory measures of sleep architecture uh, so it is a laboratory measurement of sleep architecture uh, electroencephalographic arousals eye movements with your electrooculogram chin movements air flow respiratory effort oximetry electrocardiographic uh, leg movements which are checked by your electromyography snoring body position and uh, leg movements so all these are uh, all these are monitored during your esg So routine laboratory tests usually are not helpful in ob obstructive sleep apnea unless a specific indication is present. So unless, unless there is a specific indication, a routine laboratory tests are not helpful and uh, radiographic imaging of the upper airway is not generally performed. Now there are there are various types of OSA right? So there is childhood obstructive sleep apnea. And you have your adult OSA. So, obstructive sleep apnea, hypopnea syndrome. So the pathophysiology of the childhood obstructive sleep apnea. Osa. Yeah. Um, it is not generally peripheral in uh, in origin due to nocturnal airway blockage from you know any naso but uh, uh, sorry it is most commonly you know peripheral in origin which is due to blockage of the nasopharyngeal uh, airway uh, due to some nasal uh, pathophysiology hypertrophic tonsils adenotonsillite craniofacial abnormalities so basically they'll have snoring uh, behavioral disturbances like attention deficit increased daytime sleepiness it is distinguished from the adult uh, the snoring is continuous okay in this the snoring is continuous unlike in adult which is uh, which is interrupted by a snot right uh, there is no sex predile sex predilection So there is no so uh, this uh, OSA is more common in males like right? so so in this there is no set sex uh, predilection uh, surgery is curated so basically adenotonsillectomy or tonsillectomy surgery is usually curated and there is no ESG is not helpful in evaluating children. Right? So it's not gold standard. Whereas uh, with your and the pathophysiology is peripheral. Right? Whereas with your adult, the pathophysiology is central. Okay, snoring is continuous. Okay, uh, there is severe, there is uh, there is asymptomatic to paroxysmal snoring. Paroxysmal snoring. Uh, then. Uh, it can be uh, it is central or peripheral or mixed okay peripheral uh, diseases so it can be central peripheral or mixed peripheral is uh, more confined to uh, adipose tissue in the upper airway due to obesity or uh, sometimes with superimposed craniofacial dystosis uh, so it there there'll be intermittent intermittent snoring apnea syndromes daytime sleepiness um uh hypopneas yeah so the severe form there will be 
so obesity hypoventilation syndrome is uh, severe with chron chronic daytime hypoventilation and uh, hypercapnia but there is no pulmonary disease with severe osa there will be for pulmonary because of right heart failure so these are the aasm guidelines for performing a psg uh, in patients so basically sleep stages are recorded via an electrooculogram and chin myogram emg so sleep stages are recorded heart rhythm is monitored with a single lead cg leg movements are recorded via an anterior tibialis emg breathing is monitored including air flow at the nose and mouth using thermal sensors and nasal pressure transducer uh, so using uh, inductance plethysmograph and oxygen saturation and the breathing pattern is analyzed for the presence of apnea and hypopnea so basically this emg electrooculogram uh, electrocardiogram all are used to test to monitor this pattern So as you can see here, there is a cessation of airflow for at least 10 seconds with persistent that respiratory effort. There is cessation, there is no airflow, airflow. So OSA is cessation of airflow for at least 10 seconds and this has to occur 5 times per hour of sleep with a desaturation of more than 4%. So as you can see here, uh, there is uh, basically uh, cessation of airflow for at least 10 seconds with no respiratory effort. Mixed apnea is an apnea, apnea that be begins as central and end as a, ends as an obstructive apnea. So it begins as a central and ends as a uh, so this is the central apnea and this is an obstructive apnea. So the apnea hypopnea index, it is derived from the total number of apneas and hypopneas divided by the total number of sleep. Okay, so total number of apnea and hypopnea divided by the total time of sleep. So most uh, sleep centers use a cutoff of 5 to 10 episodes per hour as normal. So 5 to 15 episodes per hour for mild, 5 to 30 episodes per hour for moderate and more than 30 episodes per hour for severe. So that was approximately where I what I gave you when more than 40 episodes per hour was considered very severe. So split night ESG, patients with respiratory disturbance index higher than 40 during the first two hours of diagnostic ESG should undergo a split night ESG study. So with the respiratory disturbance index higher than 40 during the first two hours of, I'm sorry, so with the respiratory, patients with the respiratory disturbance index uh, more than 40 higher than 40 during the first two hours of sleep should undergo a split night psg study so the final portion of the study is used to titrate the continuous positive airway pressure device so for home testing three levels of portable monitors are available uh, level two a portable monitor with the same parameters as a full attended psg Level 3 with at least 4 channels including four flow, effort and oximetry and heart rate. Yeah, so and level 4 with the fewer than 4 channels often just oximetry, uh, oximetry with flow or oximetry alone. 
So level 3 monitors are best used to confirm the diagnosis of OSA. So these level 3 monitors have measured the flow from the nose, effort put by the patient, oximetry and the heart rate. So this is approximately briefly uh, on OSA. We will be continuing the topic in another 10 minutes. I shall log on again and we shall begin class again. Let's log, sorry for the break but uh, I will see you again. Use my code like I said SASHE to subscribe and get your 10% off.